Okay, so what I wanted to do today and what is Wednesday is talk about GraphQL again, but this time we're going to be talking about Apollo. So this video is what is Apollo? And the point of this video is to not only teach you a little bit about what Apollo is, but how it relates to GraphQL. Now, I definitely mentioned Apollo in the last what is Wednesday, and I wanted to continue on that considering all of the new Apollo content on this channel. So I want to make it very clear, you know, what Apollo is and how it relates. Okay, so if you don't know what GraphQL is already, go ahead and watch last week's What is Wednesday in the What is playlist. It'll tell you all about GraphQL. Because of that, I'm going to assume that you know what GraphQL is, okay? So with the understanding that GraphQL is a new kind of query language and just a specification then that should reveal to you that Apollo is the implementation of that specification. As in, the GraphQL specification was made and Apollo is the actual code that you could use to use GraphQL. Now there's quite a bit more to it than that because Apollo is pretty darn awesome. And not only that, but there's other GraphQL implementations as well, such as Relay. So if you wanna use GraphQL, you're not stuck with Apollo um, and Apollo is not in any sort of way associated with Facebook who created GraphQL, right? So Apollo is a nice way to use GraphQL in your applications today. Now, how can you use Apollo? Well, if you would have been watching the full stack GraphQL series on this, you can see that we use Apollo on the full stack, as in we are writing Apollo code on the back end. We're writing Apollo code on the front end, and between the two, it allows us to use GraphQL to query our data. Now, do you have to use the back end and front end? Absolutely not. And then many times, you might actually be hitting your API from somewhere else. And in that case, you're only going to be using the client for Apollo. And if you hover over client, you'll notice that there are lots of different implementations of Apollo client such as React and React Native, Angular View. Uh, there's this thing called Apollo Link that allows you to essentially have middleware. There's native iOS and native Android. All of these things work really well with Apollo, allowing you to use GraphQL in any of those situations if the API exists. Now, there's all sorts of ways that you can have an API that already exists, such as GraphCMS or GraphCool or something like that. So if you just need to pull from an API, you can install install Apollo and have GraphQL pulling in your data in absolutely no time whatsoever. Now, in addition to that, there is the GraphQL server, which is the Apollo server here. Now, this Apollo server is if you want to write your own Apollo server, which we actually do in the full stack uh, GraphQL series using Meteor. You can see that there are servers available for things like Express, Happy, uh, Lambda, Koa, just all sorts of great ways that you can get your GraphQL server up and running if you need to do that. Like I mentioned, if you want to have a full stack solution, you will have to run your own server and your own client to use GraphQL. However, there's all sorts of other solutions. I mentioned a second ago, GraphCMS and GraphCool as a way to, to host your data on a GraphQL server without having to write your own server. So why use Apollo? over Relay or any of these other options. Well, uh, this isn't an advertisement for Apollo, it's just the GraphQL impl implementation I prefer to use. And some of the things I really like about Apollo are such as the Apollo Engine, which gives you real-time performance tracing so you can see exactly how your app is performing. For instance, I had a query uh, that was taking maybe 200 milliseconds, and I noticed that that query itself should not have been taking that long at all. So I went and looked at the code and I found a line of code that could be written without hitting the database a second time, allowing me to completely reduce that query length by a huge amount. And so with Apollo Engine, it gives you the visibility to see that kind of stuff super easily. Also, another really cool benefit of Apollo is these sick Apollo dev tools, which are sort of reminiscent in some ways of the uh, Redux dev tools in a little bit, where it gives you a nice interface directly in your site to query your API. You can do things like, let me get tutorials and get there. I think the 
I think their title, I think that's it. Um, as you can see here, just like that, I tested this query out and it's giving me all of the tutorials with all of their titles. Uh, another cool thing is that you can see which queries are being watched. You can see mutations that are being done. You can see your current store. This, these dev tools are one of the coolest things about Apollo and definitely a reason to check it out. Definitely something really super cool here. Another reason I like Apollo is because there's a server client uh, and all sorts of client implementation as in I can learn Apollo once and then use it on React and React Native or even like a native iOS or Android if I want. Or let's say I wanna move my app to Angular or Vue or something down the line. You don't have to relearn this. You can keep Apollo inside of there. And so uh, between Apollo Engine, which is a nice little service, different platform benefits of it. And Apollo takes care of all sorts of performance things like caching for you. And I mentioned before there was a middleware component called Apollo Link. Now Apollo Link is really cool because, well, you can have different middlewares and they speculate that different middleware might be like Apollo Link Sentry that will automatically report your errors to Sentry, which doesn't exist quite yet. But there's things like Apollo Link State, which is essentially a full on Redux replacement. This is your entire application state, allowing you to query the state of your application the exact same way that you'd be querying from an API. In addition, there's things like Apollo Link Error, there's Apollo, uh, Apollo Link HTTP, there's a persistent caching link, all sorts of really cool stuff to allow you to extend the functionality of Apollo. Okay, so I hope this has given you a better idea of what Apollo is. Apollo is a library of code that you use to actually write GraphQL both from the client side as well as the server side, but it doesn't necessarily have to be both. Now, quick note, Apollo is written by the Meteor Developer Group, so it's behind the same minds that have uh, developed Meteor. You know I'm a big fan and have been a big fan of Meteor for a long time. The uh, Sashko and the devs behind Apollo are absolutely incredible. So I have total faith that Apollo is only going to keep on improving and improving as things go on. So check it out, ApolloGraphQL.com. It is the fancy new way to use GraphQL, which you may or may not be able to tell by these past few videos, but I am super high on GraphQL. I absolutely love it. I've been working in it for a couple months now and have just been totally, totally infatuated with the benefits. So check it out, apollographql.com. And if you want to learn how to write Apollo on the front end and back end, check out the full stack GraphQL series that I'm, I'm doing right now. Uh, in addition, the next pro series, this is gonna be a little bit of a spoiler, but the next pro series uh, for Level Up Pros coming out this month will be using Apollo and GraphQL as well in a really exciting way. I, I can't wait to talk a little bit more about that as I get further along. So thanks so much for watching. As always, if you wanna help support Level Up Tutorials, head on over to the Apollo-powered leveluptutorials.com where you can either become a pro or head on over to the store and purchase some stuff to help the creation of free tutorials and free content on this YouTube channel.